And uh, maybe Marco, you could share your screen. Okay. It's fine, right? Now, yes. So today's talk will be delivered by Marco Cattaneo. He doesn't need an introduction. He was already giving a talk here at the FISC. And uh, just, uh, just let you know that these are the last uh, few <laughs> weeks uh, here of Marco. He is leaving for the second part of his PhD. As maybe some of you know, uh, the PhD of Marco is a joint PhD between uh, our institute and the university now of Helsinki, it should have been Turku, but the other uh, PhD supervisor, the Sabrina Maniscalco, moved to Helsinki. So he will be a PhD, uh, a joint PhD between these uh, two institutions now. So please, Marco, today will tell us about collisional models and uh, please start. Okay. So you can hear me well, right? Mm. Yes. But And you see the presentation. Okay, perfect. So hello everybody. And you see the uh, title of my talk is Collision Models Can Efficiently Simulate Any Multipartite Markovian Quantum Dynamics. And I can guess that this means little to many of you, but don't worry because most of my talk would be devoted to the uh, discussion and presentation of all these terms here in the title. So uh, a brief outline of the talk is this one. So first of all, I will once again introduce the concept of uh, open quantum systems. I know that many of you already heard about this many times, but uh, let's do it again for everybody to understand the, the topic. And then I will discuss um, the concept of collision models that mm, I guess uh, is uh, way less known. I will also talk about the idea of quantum simulation uh, on a quantum computer. And finally, I will present the multipartite collision model, which is uh, the, the topic of uh, and the goal of, uh, of uh, my research um, that I will present in this talk. And just to let you know, you, you see these three sections here will be mostly introductory and uh, quite, I, I think, easy to follow. Uh, the last one will be the tougher uh, when dealing with uh, details and, and algebra, basically. But I think more, more or less you can be easily um, understood by everybody, let's say, step by step. So let's start with uh, the discussion of open quantum systems. Uh, and let's go back to, to the course of quantum mechanics of a bachelor's degree. So what is a closed what is a closed or an open quantum system? Well, a closed quantum system is what we represent here by this uh, red circle and can be any quantum system, for instance, the hydrogen atom with a proton and electron there. Um, okay, um, Robert, I don't know why, but it's appearing uh, admitted to the, to the waiting room. I'm taking care of it, but ah, I'm okay, okay, okay. not able because to it's avoid it. on my screen it. all the time. <laughs> okay. It's probably because you are closed, so I'm mm. not able to, to remove it, sorry. Okay. I don't think I can, actually. Uh, so I was saying the hydrogen atom is a closed, qu closed quantum system in the sense that uh, as uh, we all studied it, there is a, a, a certain state, a quantum state uh, of the hydrogen atom represented by the cat with psi s, okay, the state of a, of a quantum system at time t. And its evolution is driven by the standard Schrodinger equation with a certain Hamiltonian h, which is the generator of time translations. And uh, uh, an equivalent representation of the state of the closed quantum system is this rho s here, that is a, the density matrix formally written like this. And this is just uh, the mathematical tool to describe uh, uh, quantum systems with, let's say, in, in quantum statistical mechanics. So, so when there is some uh, random variables uh, in, in the system. And uh, the, the time evolution of this density matrix uh, is uh, this equation, that is the, the Schrodinger equation for the density matrix, uh, also called the von Neumann equation. Okay, and this is a, a closed quantum system that we all studied 
But what is an open quantum system? Okay, there is simply uh, the, the hydrogen atom, for instance, can be immersed in the electromagnetic field in the sense that uh, uh, it's not, it, it cannot be considered as a system alone, but it, the, the interaction between system and the environment, the electromagnetic field must be taken into account. And for instance, the hydrogen atom can emit and uh, can decay because of uh, the energy loss. And this is what we call an open quantum system and we describe it abstractly like this. So the red circle, Rho S, immersed in a bigger environment. And in general, the, the quantum system will be a controllable system as the hydrogen atom, while the environment will be represented by a set of non-interacting infinite number of modes. So a giant environment interacting with the system. And of course, system plus environment together can be considered as a, a unique quantum system of the universe described by a certain state uh, rho se and the evolution of this uh, state of the universe can be written as the standard von neumann equation for the density matrix of the universe like this but what's the point we want to focus on the system only right because for instance if you take the hydrogen atom uh, you don't want to study at any time t the, the state of, a, of each electromagnetic mode of the environment in space and time. You just want to focus on the state of a hydrogen atom taking into account the interaction with the environment. So what we have to do is to recover a state of a system only, and we do it by this. This is the so-called partial trace. It's a mathematical operation that gives the state of a system starting from the initial state of the environment and it can be thought of as uh, the quantum analog of a classical marginal probability distribution. Okay, We are tracing away the degrees of freedom of the environment and we just recover the information about the state of the system, which is what we want. Of course, we may do the same also for the state of the environment, tracing away the degrees of freedom of the system, but we are just not interested in it. So we focus, as I said, on the state of the system. And what we want to do, as, um, as um, almost uh, always in physics, uh, is to study the dynamics of the state of the system. And it can be shown that the dynamics, at least the Markovian dynamics, that is to say when we don't take into account uh, memory effects in the dynamics, can be written like this or like this. So you see it's the time derivative. It's driven by a certain linear master equation and this master equation can be expressed either by means of this uh, Liouvillian superoperator or in, in this form, where you see it, there are some operators. This is the unitary part of the master equation, and there is a, a Hamiltonian operator here. And then there is a dissipative part with certain jump operators uh, um, creating dissipation on the system. And uh, the important thing is that a very, very well-known theorem of a theory of open quantum system saying that uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between this master equation that is called the uh, GKLS master equation or gorini kosakowski sudarshan lindblad master equation and uh, the most general Markovian open dynamics of the quantum system. So we have one-to-one -one correspondence between the Markovian dynamics of a system and this precise master equation in this form. And more or less, this is all we need to know about open quantum systems for my talk. Now, something uh, maybe a bit more interesting is the concept of quantum collision models. And okay, I will introduce it using this drawing, but uh, as you may guess, it's not mine, it's taken from this paper because it's too fancy. And uh, you see, we are describing a quantum system, this uh, orange ball here, with a certain state of the system, rho s. And we know that this system is evolving uh, through an open dynamics, okay? But it's a different type of open dynamics. There is not a big environment. What this quantum system is doing is that uh, it's evolving through time, like this line would be time. And at each time step, it collides with a certain ancilla, 
that is to say to 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 a outer particle of the environment uh, uh, for instance uh, if we think of uh, the hydrogen atom it will be it could be some electrons hitting on the atoms uh, on the atom at each time step delta t so uh, certain delta t and an electron comes in interacts with the atom and goes away another delta step uh, is a time step delta t and then another electron collides and then goes away and this is how the system evolves and okay this will be the drawing i will use my drawing i will use uh, throughout the presentation and once again you see the concept uh, there is the state of the system the red circle collides with the ancillas that are these blue particles here at each time step delta t and what, what is the point of quantum collision model is that you can create a correspondence between the collision model so this description of the system evolving through repeated interactions between ancillas and the system and the description of an open quantum system i did before so the system uh, here immersed in a giant environment that is a, a set of non-interacting infinite number of modes or better said you can see that uh, this description in terms of collisions leads in the limit of a small delta a small, small time step delta t to the same master equation so you can recover the same gorini kosakowski sudarshan limblad master equation i discussed before for the case of an open quantum system immersed in an environment um the question may be what for why, why do we use quantum collision models well, actually, there is quite a number of reasons um, why we we think and we use collision models, um, and we think that uh, they are interesting. And maybe the, the the first one and the most speculative one is the fact that they are providing us with a kinetic description of quantum decoherence. That is to say, a kinetic description of uh, an open quantum system dynamics. And indeed, uh, if you think about it in classical mechanics we recover many concepts of quantum thermodynamics quantum statistical uh, sorry of classical thermodynamics classical statistical mechanics by means of a kinetic description that is the one by boltzmann basically right the collisions in the gas and this is a uh, very nice because uh, you are connecting uh, a microscopic description of, of your uh, of your physical system and uh, uh, the, the the concepts of uh, thermodynamics more or less, we are doing the same with a collision model for quantum statistical dynamics. It's not exactly the same. There are more subtleties, and uh, unfortunately, it's not that clear, but it can be, let's say, a step in this direction. And indeed, another important field um, use, that, that, do, that does employ collision models is quantum thermodynamics. It's a growing field, um, quite recent. and. Uh, it's, it, 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 it uh, heavily relies on collision models and it's quite easy to understand why. For instance, let's take, uh, okay, this was the, the first paper about collision models in 1963, but you see uh, the modern framework of collision models is described uh, in these papers uh, uh, of the beginning of the present century. And uh, they all focus on thermalization quantum information in thermalization, because you see, when you describe an open evolution by means of elementary interactions, you can really recover the elementary exchange of energy entropy between the system and the environment, right? And the environment that would be each ancilla coming and colliding with the system. And it did, for instance, these are um, some very fundamental papers in the field of quantum thermodynamics. And they are very recent, you see, all in the past uh, four or five years. And especially this paper is very well known, and it provides a complete description, description of quantum thermodynamics based on collision models, in which you really get to the fine grained description of the exchange of uh, free energy, entropy, and so on and so forth, 
looking at each collision between ancilla and system and quantum system. And then you can derive the first law, the second law, and so on and so forth. So this is why we also heavily employ collision models in, in quantum thermodynamics. Other reasons, simulation of non-Markovian master equations, which I will not discuss here because they are very specific for the field of open quantum systems. And finally, and importantly, quantum simulation. A uh, strong idea, although not really explored, is to use collision models to, um, to, to apply quantum simulation to the problem of open quantum systems. And now just to, let's say, just to introduce you to the topic of quantum simulation, I would like to discuss more in depth what is quantum simulation, why it's useful, why it will be useful to employ collision models for it. So let's start really from the basics of quantum simulation on better. Let's start from the basic of classical simulation in physics and uh, consider the problem of standard classical easy model. So you take uh, N classical spins, so everything is classical. And the question we want to ask is, where is the information about these N classical spins stored? And the answer is in N classical bits, okay? That is to say, we can just describe the state of our classical easy model by means of N classical bits and trivially <laughs> spin up or spin down is represented by the equivalent uh, bit uh, zero or one, right? So a string of N classical bits of zero and one can represent the most general state uh, of our classical easing model. Okay, so everything is fine. And indeed, everybody uses classical computers to simulate the easing model, the classical easing model. Now the question is, let's take the quantum analog of a easing model then. So the quantum easing model where now we have N quantum spins. And uh, same question, where can we store this information about uh, the N quantum spins? And if you think about it, the answer is that uh, we would need too many classical bits. We, we, it's not something we can do efficiently. Indeed, let's consider the most general state of this uh, quantum easy model. And this is nothing but the linear combination of this basis here, that is the basis of uh, each possible state uh, of a quantum spin, right? Uh, zero, one, uh, up and down. But it's a linear combination. So uh, we need to focus on this wave function, which now lives uh, in, a, in a vector space, that is to say, we need two to be n complex numbers to represent the most general quantum state of this quantum easy model. And of course, this is not feasible with uh, classical bits because now are, are not true to the n um, posi possible configuration. Now you have to describe true to the n complex numbers, which is highly unfeasible. And so complexity scales exponentially. And this is why it's usually said that uh, you cannot really simulate uh, quantum physics by means of classical computers. You cannot really scale up with the numbers of, uh, with the dimension of the Hilbert space you want to, to simulate. And so what is quantum simulation? And actually, this is the same problem for which quantum computers have been, have been introduced uh, first by Feynman in 1982. And then in this paper here, this is uh, the fundamental paper for the modern approach to quantum simulation by Seth Lloyd in 1996. The very, very naive answer is that if you have n quantum spins, so you want to study and to simulate uh, the, the quantum easing model, then you can store the information about this data in n quantum bits. Okay, this is almost tautological in the sense that uh, a, a quantum bit that is a qubit is nothing but a quantum spin, 
right? So uh, yeah, you're, you're really mapping something to the same thing. And uh, so you can, let's say you have space for the, you, you have enough degrees of freedom for the, the, for the information stored in the quantumism model. And indeed, this is quite a naive answer, but uh, the, maybe the most relevant point of, of the paper is that it shows that not only you can store this information, but you can also simulate it efficiently. Well, um, what does this mean? Well, first of all, mm, okay, you, you want to simulate the dynamics of, of a quantumism model. So you have to take a Hamiltonian, the generator of time translations, and uh, simulate uh, its evolution, that is to say, creating this exponential map. And first thing to, to comment is the fact that uh, if we do not apply any restriction to the Hamiltonian of a certain uh, quantum many body system or a complex system, it's impossible to simulate it efficiently even on a quantum computer. And it's quite easy to understand why, because uh, let's say if you have n quantum spins and then you add another quantum spin, right? So you get to n plus one, then the new quantum spin can create interactions between all, between the, quantum, the new quantum spin and all the remaining n quantum spins before. So let's say that, uh, uh, and then many body interactions between pairs of spin and so on and so forth. So it, you add more particles to the model and you can create more and more interactions that you need have to simulate. So this is exponentially difficult, it cannot be done. But the point of this paper is that it can be done under the assumption of K locality. What does it mean? Well, you are assuming that you're a Hamiltonian can be decomposed into the sum of some Hamiltonians H sigma here, and each H sigma is K local. That is to say, each H sigma, sigma acts not non-trivially on only K spins, on only K subsystems of your model. And if so, if you, if you add another another spin, another quantum spin then it can only interact with k minus one spin and not anymore with all the remaining n. And can be shown that under this assumption that is quite physical because uh, after all, we, we do not have uh, infinite range interactions uh, in, in nature, then we can efficiently simulate quantum many body dynamics on a quantum computer. And how can we do this? Well, mm, we want to simulate this, right? The, the, the time evolution of this Hamiltonian that is a general Hamiltonian over all the quantum system. And the nice thing is that uh, if uh, we reduce ourselves to the, to, the, um, to the evolution of, for a time step delta t that is infinitesimal or very small anyway, we can apply this decomposition here. That is to say, this exponential is decomposed into the composition of local evolutions here. Okay, so this H sigma. And so that are easily simulable because they, they are local. Um, just notice that the Hamiltonian and the H sigma are operators. So in general, this is not a, a good equality in the sense that uh, um, if uh, all the H sigma um, do not commute, then you cannot write this equality. There are some commutators uh, in, in the expression. But uh, if you apply the easily, you can easily see that if you apply the standard baker campbell asdor formula, this is an equality up to an error of the order of uh, the square of delta t. So the idea is that if delta t is small enough, then you can apply this decomposition and uh, you can reconstruct the dynamics. Uh, of a general Hamiltonian H. And especially each H sigma that is local, local would be represented on a quantum computer by, for instance, single qubit gates or two qubit gates like this. Okay, this is the, the circuit scheme of the IBM quantum computer. And for instance, 
each, uh, each gate here would be one H sigma naively. In the sense that uh, in the limit of a small time step delta T, you're reconstructing each brick of your evolution, building up the, the total Hamiltonian H. So you are, you know, adding each piece to the, to the evolution. And finally, it can be shown that you get the real evolution under the assumption of a small time step. Okay, so I have introduced uh, the concept of uh, open quantum systems, the idea of uh, quantum collision models, and uh, the fundamental idea, uh, idea of quantum simulation. And these are the three ingredients I need for my talk. So now I will discuss more in detail the, um, the collision model, which is the topic of my, of my research. And uh, just if you have uh, any questions, please ask me now. And uh, if not, I will go to the, to the mathematical description of uh, what I've done with, uh, with the collaborators. So uh, let's go back to the quantum collision model. If you remember, we have our quantum system here, the red circle, colliding with a, with a certain ancilla during a time step delta t. And now we want to mathematically write down all these expressions to get to a certain collision model and to show that this collision model can simulate, can do quantum simulation of a class of systems we are interested in. So let's describe this collision here. We allow for a, a so-called free system evolution driven by this uh, US that is just a, a unitary dynamics uh, internal to the system, okay? And then the important part here is this uh, unitary interaction UI driven by a, a standard interaction Hamiltonian between ancilla and quantum system that is actually describing the, the collision here between uh, ancilla and quantum system. Uh, sorry, Marco, j j just a small question. Yeah. Is delta t the mean time between collisions or a random variable that tells me where, when exactly I have the collision? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's the, let's say, the, mm, the, the time during which the collision occurs. So, ah, okay. okay, thank you. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Yes, so it's not a random variable. Typically, you can fix it and you say, I don't know, something very small, like, I don't know, nine nanoseconds. And uh, this is the collision time, simply like that. Thank you. So you get the total unitary uh, evolution like this. So you just compose this free system evolution and, and, and the collision. And then the point is that you just insert this uh, uh, unitary evolution like this. So you're just evolving the, the, the total state of system and ancilla using this universal unitary evolution. And then you want to get a master equation for the state of the system only. So you, you derive this that is called the quantum map for the state of the system, describing the evolution of the state of the system. And you have to trace away, if you remember my discussion about open quantum systems, you, you do this operation of marginal distribution you trace away the decrease of freedom of the ancilla that is now the environment. So this is the mathematical description. How do we get a master equation starting from this? Well, very easily, as I said, uh, we have to consider the, the limit of infinitesimal time step. And under this assumption, you can expand the, the unitary evolution into a series like this, okay? And then you put all the pieces of the series in the quantum map I have defined before here. So the state of the system at time t plus delta t is exactly given by this one application of this quantum map. And then you can build this ratio naively. And in the limit of infinitesimal time step, this is exactly the time derivative of the of the state of the system. That is to say our master, master equation as defined before. And if you apply this for n times, that is to say n different collisions, mm, summing n time steps, then you can recover, recover the general 
so-called quantum dynamical semigroup, that is to say the, the general um, quantum dynamics, or open quantum dynamics of a system under the Markovianity assumption. And this formalism, for instance, can be found here in this paper and also in our preprint here. So what is our goal specifically? Well, we want to introduce a quantum collision model for multipartite open quantum systems. That is to say, for a system that can be seen as a quantum network like this, right? So a system made of several subsystems. So the green balls here are different quantum subsystems that can interact between each other, okay? And why shall we be interested in such a description for a quantum system? Well, there are several reasons, and especially for a, for a, for a FISC, in the sense for a center of complex uh, systems. The, the first one is just to build complex quantum networks for information or computation, quantum information or, or, or quantum computation. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you can have a look at this paper here discussing quantum synchronization in complex networks of uh, quantum harmonic uh, oscillators and uh, many other works, but also, for instance, the, the framework of quantum reservoir computing that Roberta and Miguel are developing uh, uses a, a, a quantum network, the reservoir, and uh, if we want to add dissipation on this network, uh, we need to rely on a description of it uh, as uh, an open quantum system. Many other reasons could be, I don't know, dissipative quantum phase transitions. Uh, uh, for instance, Albert gave us some talks about this and they are developing future works on the topic. And uh, essentially the idea is that if you want to observe a quantum phase transition, you need somehow complexity, you need the interaction. So you need a description as a quantum network. For the same reason, we need it to describe quantum chaos or also quantum transport in complex networks and so on. So um, let's say it's a, it's a topic of uh, relevance and importance, especially nowadays. And our point is that there are some papers before discussing collision models for multipartite open quantum systems, but they are not general. And this is exactly the goal of our work and uh, of our research to present a multipartite collision model able to describe and to reproduce the most general open quantum system dynamics of any quantum network. And then to use it to show that you can do efficient simulation of this model. So this is, I know I, I got here quite late in the talk, but uh, this was the goal of our research. And now I will just go to the final part of my talk that is just the presentation of the model and some details and a final discussion about it. So just to state again the, the goal, we have the most general Markovian master equation, GKLS master equation here, describing the open dynamics of a multipartite open quantum systems. That is to say a quantum network. We want to build a collision model using the formalism I introduced before like this with a quantum map. And we want this collision model to be able to simulate the most general master equation here. And you see here, I have written down the master equation with uh, the assumption of uh, local uh, so-called jump operators here. So the uh, jump operators of the master equation here only act on a single subsystem. And, and this is just for the sake of simplicity in the sense that uh, mm, the model is, the, is valid for many body jump operators also, but jo now just uh, think of, uh, of a description of a master equation with local jump operators. And the idea of, of our multipartite collision model is to introduce an ancillary to reproduce the, the open dynamics. And in particular, you have to introduce a single ancilla for each pair of jump operators appearing in the master equation here. So for instance, you see a single ancilla labeled by P and you see the ancilla is going 
and, and it can do more collisions, of course, uh, one for each time step. And a single ancilla labeled by P is uh, given by these indexes here, M alpha and prime alpha prime, corresponding to a given pair of jump operators in the master equation. And specifically, what do we want to do with this ancilla? And this, I think, is the most important point to understand uh, here of this discussion, is that a single ancilla is creating, is reproducing a single term in the master equation, as I said, corresponding to this pair of jump operators in the limit of small time step. And uh, if you think about it, this means that a single ancilla there is building up, let's say, a single brick of a master equation corresponding to that particular pair of jump operators. And this is exactly the, the analog for open systems of what I've discussed for quantum simulation before, right? Of a, of a thing that for a small time step, uh, you, you can divide the, the Hamiltonian into a sum of a local Hamiltonians and then you build each brick. Well, this is the same, but for open quantum systems. So we, we are doing the same, but generalizing for non uh, uh, Schrodinger master equation. So for a generalization of the Schrodinger master equation. And specifically, how do we do this? Well, let's consider, let's um, assume that, for instance, we want to reproduce a pair of jump operators, one uh, for subsystem one, and then here one for subsystem two. What we do is that we implement this series of quantum gates, that is to say, um, two body two body operators. Uh, uh, the, the ancilla is a qubit, I didn't say it, but it's a qubit. And uh, basically you just introduce this quantum gate, this unitary evolution as this. So a standard Hamiltonian evolution driven by a certain Hamiltonian containing the information about the jump operator and then uh, some operator on the ancilla. But I'm not, I don't want to discuss the details here that are not important anyway. Um, so you do this, you introduce this operator, then you have to do the same for a, for a um, the ancilla and subsystem one with a, an equivalent quantum gate, but lasting for delta t instead of delta t half. And then you repeat the same gate uh, between uh, ancilla and subsystem two. And this is uh, called the second order Suzuki Trotter decomposition. So it's a way of, let's say, building this little brick of a master equation. And it can be shown that it, it does uh, its job. <clears throat> and then, as I said, one ancilla for each pair of jump operators. So at the end, you will have uh, many ancillas and you have to compose them into a single unitary evolution like this. Then, as I did in the discussion before, you can add a free system evolution to represent a unitary part acting on the system. Then you have to initiate the, the state of the ancillas, that is to say the environment qubits in a thermal state or in the ground state as you prefer, as you prefer but okay, it must be the yeah. And then you apply the quantum map as I introduced it before. That is to say you just make the, the state and ancillas evolve according to this uh, unitary evolution here. And it can be shown that under the assumption of uh, infinitesimal time step delta t, you can reproduce the most general GKLS master equation. That is to say, um, the degrees of freedom of the, of the master equation are all mapped out by the parameters, the three parameters of the collision model that you can freely tune. That is to say, the, the, the three parameters you can tune in these gates reproduce uh, the most general coefficient, coefficients of the most general GKLS master equation. And this is why, I mean, this is our first major result. That is to say, we have uh, presented a, a collision model able to reproduce the most general Markov master equation for any multipartite open quantum systems. So now, as I said, we also wanted to show that this is a good model for quantum simulation that is somehow a topic that is not really explored. 
And what is, first of all, we have to do error estimation. That is to say, we have to ask ourselves, what is the error we are making by simulating our quantum same group here by means of collision models of our quantum map of a collision model? Of course, in the limit of infinitesimal time step, there is no error, it's perfect. But in real situations, we have a time step delta t that is small but finite. And so we have to estimate the error we are making by this. And okay, the discussion here is can be quite long, but anyway, we have divided this error into smaller errors that can sum up. And in particular, you see there is the global error, just uh, saying that what is the error we are making for a general quantum dynamical semigroup simulated by n repeated applications of uh, the collision model. The single step error, the same, but for just one collision, truncation error, collision error. Okay, I'm not going into details, neither here. Um, but finally, it can be shown that the global error scales as this, and it can be also shown that is optimal for quantum collision models. And now just to, to maybe to, to say something interesting for, for you. Uh, I want to do, uh, let's say, a comparison, a comparison between uh, this uh, error estimation and uh, quantum reservoir computing in the sense that uh, these norms here, the norms I'm using to estimate the error are the same norms they used to calculate the, co the convergence of quantum reservoir computing in the sense that here my point is, you see, the, 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 the norm is a super operator norm defined like this. And it's just saying the quantum map I'm, I'm, reprodu I'm reproducing by means of a collision model. Uh, let's say how much is it different from the quantum dynamical semigroup? And this is more or less what they do for quantum reservoir computing for convergence in the sense that they ask the quantum map creating my quantum reservoir computing, uh, uh, does it converge? That, uh, that is to say, if you calculate the norm, is it less or equal than one? Does it, goes, does it go toward a, a, a certain state we are interested in? And okay, just to just to highlight like similarities in the mathematical techniques we use for this study and quantum reservoir computing. And indeed, uh, Rodrigo helped me in this. So thanks, Rodrigo. And uh, finally, just to say what we have achieved by means of the error estimation is really that we we provide uh, an error estimation that is a error less equal than a certain number. Okay. And this was, uh, has never been done before. And this number can be, uh, let's say, <laughs> very complex, but it depends on the sensibility you want to get. And final part, and then uh, I'm done, quantum simulation, the, the final step of, of our analysis. Uh, it can be shown that our quant multipartite quantum collision model we have introduced like this is sufficiently simulable on a quantum computer under a certain assumption of K locality again. If you remember the assumption of K locality of the first paper of uh, quantum simulators, now it's the same, but for open systems. And it can be found in this uh, paper here, for instance. And it, it just reads the Liouvillian superoperator, that is to say the generator of the uh, open system dynamics can be decomposed into the sum of uh, some K local Liouvillian superoperators. That is to say the same thing. Uh, the, um, the quantum dynamics can be decomposed into the sum of some K local parts of the quantum dynamics. And uh, under this assumption, it can be shown that our model is sufficiently simulable. That is to say the number of resources, so the number of ancillas and the number of gates we need to simulate the quantum collision model on a quantum computer is a polynomial function of the number of subsystems of time and uh, of the inverse of required precision defined here. And um, so this is the final result of our work and uh, of our paper. So just the take home message of this talk, 
we have presented this multipartite quantum collision model able to describe any possible Markovian quantum dynamics of any possible multipartite open quantum system. And this includes uh, these mathematical tools, global master equations for composite thermal machines and so on, uh, which are very important for the field of quantum thermodynamics, for instance. And this was uh, the, the first result of, uh, of our work. And then we have also done the exact error estimation of our protocol for the simulation of, of, of our protocol. And this is completely new. Also the method to estimate the error is new. And uh, we have shown that uh, the, the error, the, the scaling of the error is optimal for quantum collision models. And finally, we have proven that the multipartite collision model is efficiently simulable on a quantum computer. And indeed what we want to do and what we are trying to do already now is to, to implement it, to, to implement this multipartite quantum collision model on the IBM quantum computer that is, you know, this uh, quantum computer on a cloud in which you can send the experiment to, to the platform and they really perform it in real life. Inspired by this paper here uh, by Sabrina and collaborators at Helsinki, exactly studying this quantum simulation of uh, open quantum systems on the IBM quantum computer. And this is uh, the preprint of the work and just some final words about the team. So, okay, this is me. And okay, we have done this with uh, Roberta, who is my supervisor here, Gianluca, uh, who is researcher here as well. Sabrina is my supervisor at the University of Helsinki. And finally also in collaboration with uh, Gabriele De Chiara, who is a, a professor at Queen's University Belfast and who is an expert in quantum thermodynamics. And uh, this is all. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. I like this is the last picture. The previous slide is your state now. <laughs> yes, Sorry? In the previous slide. Yeah, yeah, it's the same, the it's the same of picture. And summer is like uh, Mallorca and Finland. Is it? Ah, this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Perfect superposition of my PhD. So if there are questions at this point, I would just uh, ask to the, to the audience to unmute themselves and, and ask. Hi, Marco. Thank you for, yeah. for the talk. I want just to ask you, what will be the first application of your method to, in the, the IBM, IBM quantum computer? With which system, which physical system will you simulate? Yeah. Mm, good point. Uh, what we are trying to do by now is the simplest thing because the IBM quantum computer is terribly noisy. So <laughs> still there is road to be done toward a good simulation of, a, of an open quantum system. But a very interesting thing we are trying to do is to consider uh, by now a very simple model of two spins coupled together. And what in real life would be two spins inter immersed in a common field. So like in a common electromagnetic field, this for instance can give rise to super radians or sub radians. And what we are trying to do is to observe this, for instance, sub radian regime on the quantum computer and to observe a slowly decaying eigenmode of the a, of a dynamics of the two qubits. So let's say what we are trying to do is to implement collective efforts on a quantum computer. And this, to the best of my knowledge, has never been done before. Uh, wait, collective efforts in open quantum systems. In the sense that uh, most of the um, collision models provided before were local, were not for quantum networks. Uh, only included local interactions. And of course, by means of local interactions, you cannot create a, collective efforts like uh, subradians or also synchronization between spins. And this is what we are trying to do now. And then we, we will try with three qubits and try to scale up the, the efforts of uh, subradians. Okay, thanks. Uh, so maybe, maybe I can have a stupid question uh, mm -hmm. because um, so as I understand you, when you explain the, uh, or as I understand also quantum simulation, uh, you start with a, with a very uh, basic system where you have a 
uh, n qubits, for example, n qubits represented by n spins. But now you have to introduce these ancillaries. So I assume when you want to simulate an open quantum system, you somehow need a bigger quantum computer than, than the network that you're trying to simulate. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And is there like it's an right. estimation? Yeah, yeah, it's right in the sense that uh, uh, indeed this is you always have to rely on ancillas. Also, not only for uh, simulation of open systems, but also simulation of closed quantum systems heavily rely on, on ancillas, basically because you have to build these bricks, let's say. And so you have, mm, you, you, you need some ancillary qubits. But the point is that what we show is that the number of these ancillary qubits is um, a polynomial function of the number of subsystems and so on. So there is no exponential scale up of the, of the number of resources. And uh, for instance, let's say in the case of, uh, of n qubits, in the worst scenarios, uh, you need, uh, okay, now the number is not trivial, but you need something like, uh, okay, it also depends on the K locality assumption, but uh, uh, it's something like uh, n times uh, two to the K, two to the K, like of the K locality minus one. Ancillas. So let's say proportional to the number of uh, subsystems and then this factor depending on the K locality. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions or comments? I have also a question. So thanks, Marco, for the nice for the nice talk. Uh, so I was wondering the so if given a master equation, a Markovian master equation, so the, the composition into un, uh, unitaries with ancillas and so on that you find, if it is unique. I, uh, I mean, I guess that it's unique in the sense that probably there is a way to find the simplest one in the sense that you, you may, put more qubits, more ancillary qubits and find, uh, and, and still find the same master equation. So let's say probably there is some way to define uh, uniqueness in the, in the system, in, in this representation, but it's not a, a trivial one to, just to give an example. If we want to simulate a master equation at a given temperature, even ne negative temperature, because the, the good thing of a protocol is that we can engineer everything. We do not have to rely on real system. So we can play with the ancillas as we want. So let's take, um, I don't know, a master equation at a certain temperature T. There are two methods by which we can implement this with a multipartite collision model. Uh, Okay, maybe here mathematical details get a bit tough, but uh, one way would be, I take uh, two different sets of ancillas, one in the ground state, creating uh, emission, one uh, in, in the excited state, creating the absorption part of, of the master equation. And then you have, you know, a, a set of ancilla with, I don't know, two times M ancillas. And then you build the pieces in the master equation corresponding one to emission and one to absorption. But then you can also take a, a, a new system with only M ancillas, so half of the ancillas of the previous uh, example. And now you set the ancillas, the, the state of the ancillas at the thermal state with same temperature T. And then you can combine these new ancillas uh, in a thermal state in a way um, in which you can reproduce at the same time the emission and absorption part using only M ancillas. So let's say uh, probably there is a uniqueness condition, but you have to put more constraints on what you can do and what you cannot do. Maybe Marco, in general, one could say that there is not strong uniqueness. No. Because uh, actually, even just starting from the master equation, you can write the master equation, for instance, diagonalizing in diagonal and non-diagonal form. 
And already in that case, you have two different yeah. descriptions in terms of consider. So there is no strong uniqueness. Then you can define up to which grade you want to have the simplest description under some conditions. Yes. Then you can add that. And probably, especially if you want for quantum simulation, probably you can get to, let's say, to the minimum amount of resources for a given master equation, but it might be non-trivial in the sense that, uh, let's suppose I give you a non-diagonal GKLS master equation, and you are not able to abstractly diagonalize it because I don't know, because it's complex. And then you don't even know how to get to the diagonal form. So you do not even, I mean, you can easily reproduce the, the master equation by means of a collision model for the non-diagonal form, but there, there is probably a shortcut getting uh, immediately to the diagonal form that is a, a similar collision model with less resources, but you don't know it, let's say. So uh, yes, as Roberta was saying, uh, mm, probably there is, but it depends a bit on the ingredients you want to use. Because I think that um, therefore, for quantum thermodynamics, this is probably important, no? Because uh, you want to calculate quantities like heat, no? Or energy exchange, or, or particle exchange with reservoirs. Then it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not the same if you have one reservoir or two reservoirs at different temperatures, no? Because you may have maybe an equilibrium steady state, or you may have uh, yes. No, but one could look into that because in the same, I mean, in, in general, an open quantum system or an open classical system even, uh, it's just a reduced description. So, of course, there are many ways in which you can complete it. And then in the same way, also, if you look at it from a thermodynamic perspective, of course, everything must remain consistent with the fact that you have your constraint on the open system. But the, what is happening out, let's say, can depend on the way in which you describe it but uh, probably the thermodynamic description of the open system must, must remain consistent. So thermodynamics mm -hmm. can offer constraints on the, yeah. on the way yeah. you can describe it. I think it. it's not a trivial question. And actually now we were just speculating on a different theme. That is, uh, if you start uh, with a certain master equation and it has a certain symmetry, like uh, phase covariance or some, these kinds of uh, open system symmetries, and uh, we were trying to derive some rules of the same symmetry for a dilation of a master of a quantum map. And uh, in the sense that uh, if you build a collision model, the interaction between ancillas and, uh, and, uh, and the system, can we say that they must have a certain symmetry as well? And here, you know, there are some topics about, uh, related to the, to the minimal Stein spring dilation of the quantum map you are reproducing that could be connected to the minimal amount of resources in the sense that, uh, of course, uh, the minimal um, dilation of, of the quantum map gives you already a lower bound on the resources. I don't know if it's a strict lower bound and uh, if there is a way to get exactly that amount of resources of you have, uh, to scale up, but uh, I think it's a difficult question. And I think that using symmetries to, to set some constraints may help, mm -hmm. because, mm, but uh, quite open. So also one of the applications of conditional models in, in quantum thermodynamics has been to, to get some insights about how is uh, the energetic or the thermodynamic cost of the coupling between yeah. the system and environment? Yeah, this is what was, we want to do with Gabriele. Okay, um, I was at wondering least if we didn't start uh, exploring it, but of course it's the next step because it's what he have done. He has done in the in the case of local master equations, calculating the work, the the heat, uh, showing that uh, it doesn't violate the second law of thermodynamics, and so on. So uh, something we would like to do. And actually, I think uh, we would be more than happy if you participate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will be happy if I can. Maybe we can see if there are other yeah. general questions. And if not, we can uh, move on a separate uh, yes. discussion <laughs> later. Any other question, general comments? OK, so I think. Uh, 
we can thank Marco again and uh, see you next week. Bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hola, Lalo.